Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be doing yet another project involving the $5 Windows 98 PC. Now a couple of videos ago, we actually did our second attempt at actually getting this computer on the internet. Uh, and we actually were successful as you can see by what we've got on the monitor here today. Uh, and if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out up in the cards because that was a, a fun you know, little project that I was just so excited to actually get uh, over with because we can now actually successfully browse the internet with this computer. And one of the things I've been wanting to do for a while, and something that some of you guys have actually uh, suggested me to do, uh, is actually browsing the old net on this computer. Now the old net, I actually did a dedicated video on it a couple of months ago, and what it is is basically a archive of older websites that you can actually browse on older computers, and that is the big difference that makes this website a little bit different from the Wayback Machine. Even though that this actually relies on the Wayback Machine's massive archive of older web pages to function, this project basically gives it a, a new interface that you can actually access on an older computer. So this computer right here is from the year 2000, and we're gonna actually be browsing the web on it as if we were in the year 2000. So yes, this is theoldnet.com in all of its glory. Like I said, I actually did a dedicated video of this a couple of, of uh, months ago, and actually something really cool happened. The author of this website, the person who actually created, actually reached out to me and said that uh, he actually woke up one morning and there was a bunch of uh, traffic coming to his site, and it was actually from my video. I, I would assume he actually did a, a search and you know found my video that it was getting uh, a you know decent amount of views, and apparently a bunch of people were in here signing the uh, guest book saying Michael MJD sent me, which is pretty awesome. Um, so maybe that that'll happen again. Who knows? You know, for all you guys who haven't actually seen my uh, previous video, and we actually have uh, a a couple of things that I want to actually try out. We're obviously going to right now be browsing the old net on Internet Explorer version of 5.0, which is what we've uh, got here. But I do have some other web browsers that I want to take a look at as well a little bit later on in the video. So we're going to start things out as one always does by going to google.com in uh, the year 2000 yeah we're going to go ahead and just pretty much I would say I mean we can probably go back a little bit but I would I mean not to 1995 because Google didn't even exist in 1995 but um, I just think it would be fun since like I said this computer came out in the year 2000 just to kind of browse the web uh, as if we were in the year 2000 and just kind of see what you would see if you were using this computer back then so we're gonna start off with google.com and click on get it and that's actually going to you know take us to uh, Google.com in the year 2000. So this is how it looked. And you can see we actually have a little bit of a uh, formatting error here with uh, the word I'm feeling lucky. The uh, apostrophe is not uh, appearing properly as you can see there. So let's go ahead and actually search Google. Let's actually search for Michael MJD and see if it's a, yeah, so it is actually going to just load the regular Google uh, you know, search functionality, so it's not going to stay on the old net. So yeah, definitely pretty cool. And you can, you can actually click the button and just go to the uh, Google homepage. So this is actually a, a pretty cool way if you were not able to get, for whatever reason, this version of, of the Google homepage to display on your computer, you could actually do this. And if the search page was able to display properly, um, well, you could actually, you know, use Google just by actually starting out in this uh, version of Google from 20 years ago. But one thing that we can do is click on some of these links down here because you can see they are actually going to uh, redirect you to uh, the archived page that the old net has. So let's see who Google was hiring in uh, 2000. So we'll click on cool jobs here and let's see if Google has any job openings. So here we go. So here's the old uh, jobs landing page on Google. So all positions listed are based in the San Francisco Bay Area. They were hiring a lot of people, engineering, operations, sales. So let's say I was looking for a new job in the year 2000. It's actually pretty neat. All of the job listings are on this same page here. So when I click on like UI designer, for example, it just jumps down to the point in the page where the UI designer um, listing begins. So it says Google is looking for a candidate with a strong background on in, in interface design. Uh, send a text or HTML version of your resume to jobs at google.com or fax to there's their fax number. So yeah, this is back when you had to actually just email jobs at google.com instead of going through the whole process they have online now. And they wanted you to either send a text version in ASCII text or an HTML version, which is pretty cool. And actually, I don't know if you guys were able to notice, but check this out. Uh, we've actually gone on off of the old net 
And onto the Wayback Machine, you see that we're now actually pulling this page from web.archive.org instead of the old net. So, and yeah, that is basically because the old net relies on the Internet Archive's, like I said, massive repository of, uh, you know, these web pages. So it looks like we actually branched off of the old net when I clicked on one of these links. So when I clicked on UI Designer, yeah, so it's it actually jumps to web.archive.org. So yeah, you can actually browse, like, if you knew the exact... Um, link of a archived version of some web page on the internet archive you could actually browse to it but it's just getting through their initial like search thing where you actually go to web.archive.org and you know search for whatever website that you want to browse and then like choose from that whole thing where you can like go back you know however many years that's a pretty advanced web page and it could be uh, pretty hard for some of these older browsers to display properly let's actually go to microsoft.com in the year 1999 uh, as y2k was you know on the horizon let's see what what Microsoft was talking about. So something else that you guys have probably noticed by now is on the old nets, uh, unlike on the Wayback Machine, uh, the only way that you actually select what snapshot that you want to um, you know, use to actually go back to is, is just by this year slider. So it's, it's not actually, you know, going to let you pick a specific date and time like you can on uh, the Wayback Machine. So this is what Microsoft's website looked like uh, on some date in 1999. Let's actually scroll down here and see. So uh, October 12th, 1999, at 6.15 p.m. Pacific time is when this was last updated. So here is what uh, what the site looked like. Apparently, you could win cool James Bond prizes. Let's hit, let's go ahead and check that out. Apparently, they had some some giveaway going on. The world is not enough. 007, November nineteenth, nineteen ninety nine. A trip for two to Hollywood to attend the world premiere of the latest James Bond movie. The world is not enough. People may stare. You'll be yeah. So that's again the uh, apostrophe not appearing properly. You'll be the only one hand handing in the sleek black Hewlett Packard what <laughs> a limited edition palm sized PC that is not available in any store your mission is to enter the sweepstakes win the grand prize and see the Bond movie before anyone else and you'll pocket the Windows CE based device that everyone wants but few can have oh that is oh my gosh are you kidding me I didn't even realize this thing existed it, look it's like a James Bond themed Windows CE PDA oh my okay I think I found another thing on my bucket list that I need to somehow acquire is, is, is get this thing. Gosh, that's like probably super rare though. Getting a Windows CE device that's like James Bond themed. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you could enter this uh, sweepstakes here. Um, so yeah, it was put on by, um, you know, HP is the one who actually made this device. So, uh, and yeah, now it actually goes to the Wayback Machine and just spits out a error message because it, it, it tried to load whatever web page that was, which the Wayback Machine unfortunately does not have archived. So we could not enter the uh, sweepstakes, but you know, obviously you just can't now anyway. But yeah, I guess only one person got this, so there's probably, like, I'm probably never going to be able to, like, to get this then, because whoever has it is, is probably not going to sell it at all. Um, but yeah, that's actually very interesting. Um, super cool, guys. I, I literally did not even know that. Man, that is, that is super cool. So yeah, apparently you could enter to win a uh, super cool, like, trip to see a James Bond movie and win like an HP PDA back in 1999. Definitely pretty cool stuff. Uh, one of the other things that I wanna do is obviously, as I mentioned before, I do wanna try out the old net on some other web browsers. Everything is actually working pretty good on Internet Explorer 5 so far. Uh, this is again version 5.0. This is just the, the standard copy of IE that came with Windows 98 second edition. But we do have a couple of different web browsers that I wanna actually try as well and just kinda show you guys how they work and if there are any differences. Opera is obviously a, a more modern web browser so you can see that we are getting not the, the most recent version of the Google homepage but still a version that is more recent than the last version that displayed in Internet Explorer 5 where we've got this black bar up here and uh, you know it looks a little bit more modern. Let's see if we can load sites like osforms.net. Um, we actually saw this same problem on Internet Explorer 1.0 when I tried to run that on Windows 10. Um, we had a very, very similar problem where it was having trouble displaying certain web pages because they use HTTPS. Now, OS Forms, I, I do have it set to force HTTPS, so even if you forcibly go and, you know, put the HTTP protocol and even put www. Um, it's still going to just auto, you know, redirect you to HTTPS. So, um, teammjd.com is the exact same way, so that's not going to work either. Um, but we can obviously go to the old net, 
com you know that's gonna work totally fine so here's here's how it looks so we've got Firefox installed now um, I believe out of all of these Firefox is the latest browser I think Opera 10 came out in like 2009 2008 2009 and this version of Firefox here uh, I think is a little bit newer than that so yeah I just actually confirmed that the version of Firefox we have here was released in 2012 but I am now actually re remembering one of the big problems with this version of Firefox running under Windows 98 especially on this computer is that it is very very sluggish it's very slow um, one of the problems and this has nothing to do with performance but it actually doesn't really display uh, text in the address bar correctly if you type in google.com whatever your last character is it actually doesn't show up so it looks like I just have google.co um, shown there but I actually have google.com typed out uh, well now I have google.coom so we'll just type in google.com but yeah it, it actually does not um, show for whatever reason the last character of that you can see that the slash here is uh, correct and it even says in here google.co so whatever reason the M in com does not want to display properly even even here um, so yeah, this is just kind of, and this is um, probably because, well, for a number of reasons. This is using the kernel X compatibility layer. Um, it's a newer version of a browser that wasn't really designed for Windows 98, so it's obviously not really going to uh, function exactly as intended on Windows 98. Um, even things like the uh, Google homepage here, this actually loads the, the most recent version of the homepage with the little grid up here like I was talking about where you can click on it to get your, your uh, apps. But... Uh, you can see that it is basically unusable. I mean, when you open that, it like completely freezes the entire browser. Um, so yeah, I would probably recommend to just sticking with um, Opera, probably. I mean, you could still use Internet Explorer 5, but Opera is probably going to be your best bet. And obviously, using the old net on, on Opera is pretty much as you would expect it to. Uh, you're just going to have a better chance of like newer websites that are not on the old net displaying properly. Um, so yeah, if you guys were, were, were kind of wondering what web browsers you can use on Windows 98, well, there's a couple of them. I'll go ahead and leave those links down below, um, especially the link to uh, Opera, because that is the one that I personally would uh, recommend using. And if you guys have any other, like, you know, browsers out there that you recommend using on Windows 98 that don't completely freeze like this when you try to load the Google homepage, um, be sure to let me know. I've heard of a lot of good options out there. Uh, Kmillion was one of them that showed up pretty often um, for the research that I did. Um, but unfortunately we just weren't able to actually get it working for this video so that might be for another time one of the other cool things that the old net has is this nav bar right here and this actually works on this version of internet explorer and this is very similar to uh, the little bar that will come up at the top of your screen um, when you're browsing on the Internet Archive. And this basically just kind of allows you to uh, more easily kind of browse to different websites uh, using the old net. So, you know, instead of having to go back to this page, type in whatever address you want, and then click, you know, your year and everything and, and get it, you can just have it right up here and just like right, right below this uh, little toolbar is, is where the website content is actually on display. So let's go ahead and take a look at yahoo.com in the year uh, 2000. Actually, yeah, we'll go to the year 2000. And these over here are also pretty useful options, uh, the option to decode or not, and the option to enable scripts or not. So yeah, here is what yahoo.com looked like in the year 2000. You can see that it's mostly text, which is something to be expected, but definitely a still a pretty nice layout. We can obviously search here if we want to. Let's actually see if we search for one of Yahoo's competitors here and click on search, uh, if it's actually, you know, so it's not actually able to display that page. So it may, actually be trying to uh to load like the the modern version of the uh, yahoo web page um and actually just to confirm that we can actually get out of the uh, little bar here and just go to yahoo.com in 2000 click on get it and then actually search for google here and click on search and yeah, so it, it actually does the exact same thing that it tried to do on Google, which it just, you know, leaves the old net and goes to the uh, modern yahoo.com, you know, search page and, and tries to search for Google, which obviously is not going to be able to be displayed correctly. But yeah, this, this nav bar right here is definitely one of my favorite features on this website. Uh, we can actually also t uh, take a look at some of these most visited sites. We can go to members.aol.com. Uh, and check out what that looked like and we actually don't know what year that it is until it actually loads the page because it'll say up here in the um, address bar uh, or we can actually just hover over it so this is from the year 1996 
Uh, oh, and actually displays this. Welcome to an error again, 404 not found. I haven't actually seen this. It's, it's kind of funny. So you were trying to reach. This is actually the full URL that it was trying to pull from the Wayback Machine. And uh, it says, if a link cannot be loaded, either means it's not archived on the Wayback Machine or the old Nets code is failing to parse it due to a bug or an absent functionality. Um, the best way to go about it is head on over to the Wayback Machine on Modern Computer and try to load the site directly. So... Um, yeah, this is probably, we can actually confirm this by just clicking on this link and seeing if um, we get to that page on here, which it looks like we do. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So this is just not archived on the Wayback Machine. And you can see we actually have like a little bit of an interesting effect going on because we're still actually on the old net and it's kind of uh, using that kind of built-in like browser uh, feature that it has with like the nav bar and it's actually using that to browse to the Wayback Machine so we actually are still at least in IE's perspective on the oldnet.com. You guys can also go and sign the guest book if you haven't already. Let me actually sign it in here and just kind of put in uh, my name here and see if anyone, I'll, I'll just basically tease this video before it goes live. Hello from the 98 PC. We'll go ahead and sign that there. There you go. Check that out. So I am on the guest book. Michael MJD said hello from the 98 PC. Pretty sweet. So uh, yeah. So if any of you guys, you know, were browsing the old net and you saw my little um, chat here on the guest book, you guys know what this video is all about, which is pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, guys, that is basically a very brief look at the old net, kind of actually on period-specific hardware. Definitely pretty, pretty cool, pretty awesome stuff. One of the things we've been talking about a lot in this video is websites. And if you guys are thinking about maybe you're starting a new business or starting a new online presence and you actually want to get a website, even if you have no experience whatsoever, you might be interested in checking out this video sponsor, Hostinger. Hostinger is an affordable website hosting provider with features designed to make managing your site extremely easy. Even if you don't know anything about HTML, Hostinger offers tools like a website builder to make the process of designing your website very straightforward. They also offer domain registration, and some of their hosting plans even include a free domain for the first year. Their custom H panel lets you get quick access to your account information and provides quick links to some of the most used features. One of my favorites is the auto installer. This allows you to easily install a wide variety of software on your website. I recently used this feature to set up a new WordPress site for my YouTube channel at michaelmjd.com. Instead of dealing with manually copying files to my web server and creating MySQL databases, all I had to do was fill out a small form and press install. It's that simple. Hostinger offers multiple hosting packages to suit your budget. Pricing starts at just 99 cents per month for a four year commitment. So if you're interested in trying out Hostinger today, click the link in this video's description and use my coupon code MichaelMJD at checkout to save up to 91% off any web hosting plan. So guys, there you have it. That is the long awaited video of actually browsing the old net.com on the $5 Windows 98 PC with a couple of different web browsers. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see more like it, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And as always, if you guys have any comments or questions for me, be sure to leave those down below as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.